What's up everybody? It is your boy Johnny here back with another Elvis video. And today I want to do an Elvis video I've been promising for a long time. It's basically going to be me doing a storytelling time. This video is going to be about how I became an Elvis fan and when and how it came about and all that good stuff. So I'm going to try to be brief and to the point. I'm basically going to be just sitting here talking, but I'm going to have a few visuals here and there. So I'm going to try to be brief and to the point and try not to stumble over my words. Um, while I do this. So, before I get started, I just want to apologize for the mess in the back, okay? Because I wish I had some kind of backdrop or something. Because I have a construction going on on the other end of my house, so I had to pull some stuff out of there and put it up here. So, I do apologize for the mess in the background and this ugly piss color you got on the walls. I gotta get rid of that. But anyways, so I just want to get started and talk about... Because people always ask me all the time when I do live chats and all that, they say, hey Johnny, How'd you become an Elvis fan? Well, today I am going to do this video as promised. So let's get started. And just before I get started talking about how I became an Elvis fan, I'm going to tell you right now though, I did not learn it from my parents or from my grandparents. Usually a lot of people say, hey, I learned from my parents about Elvis or I learned from my grandparents. Maybe somebody with my age, like my grandparents, they would say, but not me. I found Elvis all by myself. And I'm going to explain how right now. So let's go back to me. Actually, I became a fan of Elvis on the anniversary of his death, the 25th anniversary of his death. So let's go back to August 16th, 2002, right after the new millennium <laughs> in the early 2000s. So let's go back to August 16th, 2002. I was in eighth grade. Okay. I was 13 right before my 14th birthday. So... It's probably, you know, about the second week of school, and it all makes sense. I had to do some research before I did this video when I became an Elvis fan, okay? It's all going to come together, you will see as I explain it. So, I'm in 8th grade. It's August 16th, 2002, the anniversary of Elvis's death, the 25th anniversary of his death. And this is right before my 13th birthday. I'm probably about two weeks into the school year, but down here where I live, they go back to school in August usually. So, and it's, a, and it's a Friday afternoon, I get off the bus. So usually when I get off the bus, I, I was usually the, I want to say the last one home. But at that time, my older sisters, they were working. My mom, my parents would get off at a certain time. And, but I was always the first one home by myself. So I just remember coming off the bus one day, coming home. Usually what I always did, I would drop my stuff at the door, you know, my book bag, take off my shoes come into the kitchen, I always find something to eat first, that's what I always did. And then I would turn on the TV. So, again, this is the anniversary of Elvis' death, the 25th. So I just remember sitting on the couch, and at this time, um, they used to do it a lot every year. Every year they used to do it very often. Turner Classic Movies, the movie channel that plays a lot of classic movies, they used to always do a movie marathon, Elvis' birthday or Elvis' death. So I remember just sitting there, on the couch, cable TV, mind you, okay? <laughs> Sitting there flipping through the channels, and Turner Classic Movies is here in the South, or in Georgia, is, is based out of. Anyways, I'm trying not to get off topic. <laughs> so I'm sitting there, and then all of a sudden, this picture catches them my eye, and I stop on it. Anyways, it was Turner Classic Movies, and it ended up being an Elvis movie they were playing. Now, I'm going to let you know, I always knew who Elvis was. Who didn't? And the first thing you thought of Elvis, you thought of... A lot of people think of Vegas Elvis, as they say. You know, the jumpsuits, the sideburns, the glasses, capes, buckles, whatever. That's what people think of. I knew this guy on the screen was Elvis, but... And I knew who Elvis was, but I didn't know... All, you know... I want to look for the, I'm trying to think of the right word. Um, I guess the meaning behind Elvis or whatever, you know, and what he represented. But I, I always knew he was a big guy. You know, he was very popular and he was known as the king of rock and roll and all that. So I'm sitting there and it, it just caught my eye. And it made me stop the channel and started watching an Elvis movie. And thinking back, and, it, and the one I stopped on that caught my eye was one of his worst movies ever, okay? And it was actually, I remember it very vividly because it actually was this one. Tickle me. <laughs> so the first Elvis movie, first visual I really had of Elvis was the movie Tickle Me. 
as bad as this movie was, it made me stop and watch him. I'm like, because, you know, Elvis has this appeal about him, you know, for men and women, I guess. For me, he just looked really cool. Um, I knew it was Elvis. But I just sat there and started watching it. Don't know why. It was a scene around where they're like in this haunted, I don't know if it was a motel or a hotel or something. And it was like haunted with little monsters in it. And I started watching. It was like comedy too a little bit. So you didn't think of that when you thought of Elvis. So I just sat there on the couch and started watching this movie. And I continued through the night. I just sat there the whole time. And I can't remember who came home first, my mom or my dad. Um, who came in the door next, getting off of work. My mom, I think it was my mom. Let's just say my mom came in the door first. So my mom comes in the door. She's like, hey, Johnny, what's going on? If anyone knew, me, if anyone knows me, I do voices for my family. And my mom sounds like Fran Drescher, the nanny, okay? So that's what people used to always tell her. She looked like her. She sounded like her. Anyway, so she walks in the door. Hey, Johnny, what are you watching? I said, I'm watching this movie on TV. I'm watching this. You know, she asked me how my day was and all that. She's like, what are you watching on TV? I said, oh, I'm watching this movie with Elvis in it. She was, her face was like, okay. Not like you're watching that. It was like, how are you watching Elvis? You know, how, I, looking back, I can see her being like, okay, how do you know about Elvis? Or what made you stop? And what she was, she goes, huh, okay. And that was it. She didn't say nothing else. So I just sat there and continued watching it. And I, not too long after that, my dad came through the door, came over from work. Hey, Johnny, what's going on? Um, and I said, oh, nothing, Dad. I'm just sitting here watching this Elvis movie. <laughs> and, this is, and this is how I knew my, my parents knew who Elvis was, especially my dad. Me and my dad, we connect a certain way, you know? So I remember after I said, I, was, I said, yeah, I'm watching this Elvis movie on TV. He went in all of a sudden out of nowhere. <laughs> he would kill me if I was telling him the story, maybe. He went into this Elvis impression. He's like, come on, everybody, and turn your head to the left. Come on, you know, hey, 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 and my baby loves me. He was doing that part from, v turns out he was doing that part from Viva Las Vegas, knowing now since I'm a fan. And I'm like, what the hell was that? <laughs> and I'm like, huh? He's like, oh man. He goes, man, when I was when I was very small, I loved Elvis, you know. And then my dad, he always went into these stories. He's, it's like he has a story. He's like one of those typical dads. He has a story for everything. And he went to his story. Oh my gosh, when I was very small, I loved Elvis. I used to watch his movies when they came on TV. I used to do it. I had this impression of Elvis that your aunts would, you know, his sisters would love for him to do when he was small and do the whole hey 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 and my baby loves me and do the whole dancing thing he said he used to do. So he told me all that, which I thought was funny. So, yeah, I just sat there and just watched Elvis. And at one point, you know, usually on a Friday night as a family, if we were home or whoever was home, we would, you know, by this time my sisters had girlfriends and their boyfriends and everything, girlfriends, <laughs> boyfriends and stuff. But every Friday night, you know, usually we would go out as a family. Um, to eat and maybe go to a couple stores and come home. So I remember we went out for dinner and then came home and I just went right back. I'm like, hmm, I wonder if Elvis is still playing. Because at this point, I still don't know that it's the anniversary of Elvis' death, really. So I remember getting home and just making it a point to put back on that TV and see if Elvis was playing. And he was. And I sat there, you know, and played and watched Elvis the whole night on TV. And usually at the end of the night, we're all ready to go to bed. We would hang out, like me and my sisters, we would hang out in my parents' room. It's like, you know, we would talk about some stuff. My parents be, you know, getting ready for bed, going in and out of the bathroom. Maybe they go in the shower, come out, whatever. Um, I remember at one point, my dad got out of the bathroom. Like, he probably came out of the shower or something. And, I, you know, when I came in the room, they had a TV in the room. I put it on TCM. And I think by this time, Elvis, that's the way it is, was playing. It was a special edition, thinking back now. It was the special edition, and we were sitting there watching Elvis, that's the way it is, the movie. So, that was really cool. So, we sat there. He comes out of the bed. So, I, as soon as I came to my parents' bedroom, I turned the TV on, and that was on. And my dad comes out of the bathroom, and he didn't really say anything. He's like, he all he said was, oh, you're still watching this? And then, all of a sudden, he just sat down on the bed and started watching with me. Um, he was really, I can tell when he was watching it, he was very intrigued. Because, you know, when you're raising a family, 
you know, your life gets busy sometimes. And my dad probably never really watched or heard anything Elvis in years and years. But me and my, my parents were raising four kids. So then at one point, my mom, she comes out of the bathroom. She probably went in the shower or something, comes out. And she goes, you still watching this? I mean, Elvis was a handsome man, though. Yeah, that's how my mom was, <laughs> you know. And we're sitting there watching. And... I think at one point Elvis was singing In the Ghetto and my dad was like doing an impression. He's like, In the Ghetto. Like, <laughs> he's crazy, you know. So then, you know, at one point my parents, they kick us out of their room. That's what he always did. On a, you know, all right, get out. We're going to bed. So we would leave. And I'm the only child that had a TV in my room because I was the youngest and I was, and I was the only boy and I was spoiled. You know, it's a fact. I don't care. I'm proud of it. <laughs> so I had a TV in my room. And a VCR. A VCR. Jeez. So I remember, again, still sitting watching Elvis. I think by this time, El the movie Elvis on Tour was on. So I was watching Elvis on Tour. But I knew I was getting tired myself. So I decided, because I was into wrestling at the time, I knew how to set the VCR to record stuff, like slow down um, the speed of the tape so you can record a lot on a VHS tape with a VCR. So I remember, I'm like, you know what? And I remember at the end of That's the Way It Is or On Tour, it said, coming up throughout the night, this movie, this movie. I think the next movie was Jailhouse House Rock, and then the movie after that was Speedway. I remember, gosh, I can't believe I remember this stuff. So I remember saying, okay, well, if I fall asleep, I'm going to have it start at this time to catch that movie, Jailhouse House Rock, whatever the hell that is, because I still haven't seen that movie. So I set it through the night. Saturday morning comes, I wake up. I always woke up before everybody. I am still do. I woke up probably like at 6, six o'clock in the morning, maybe 7. And I remember as soon as getting up, seeing what was recorded through the night of Elvis. And I watched Jehoss Rock. And I was really intrigued by that. I'm like, wow, he looks really different and young and all that. So I remember watching that. And then Speedway was next. Well, it turned out I set the speed of the tape wrong. And I only basically caught like the first 10 minutes of Speedway. And when it cut off, I was like, what the hell? Like, what, what did I do wrong? I was, I was kind of upset. So, I, after that, I didn't forget about Elvis, but it, it stuck in my mind. Because fast forward a month later. So, fast forward about a month later. And this is around the same time they were coming out with a huge release that really, to me... This is the last time they brought a lot of Elvis fans in. So I think it was, a, again, it was probably a Friday night. Fast forward about a month, sometime September. You know, like I said, on Friday nights, we usually go out for dinner and go to some stores. Well, I and usually when we used to go to stores, my sisters and my mom, they would go their own way. They would go try on clothes and look at clothes and shoes. And me and my dad, you know, sometimes my, me and my dad would hang out. We would maybe go... Maybe even to another store, or we, he'd bring me to the toy section or the trading card section, like for Pokemon cards, you know, and baseball cards. Or we would sit in the car. And I remember I had this little TV with the antenna you put in the cigarette lighter, and I would watch The Simpsons or any, and everything. But anyways, so I, I think this night, you know, we were at, maybe you know the store Target. We were at Target this night, and... um. I remember me and my dad stayed in the car. I remember we were talking about a lot of different stuff. And it was getting late. And all of a sudden, here's my sisters and my mom coming out of the store. And this is what put the stamp of me being an Elvis fan. Probably going to be for the rest of my life. And this, to me, is the last time that they really pulled in a lot of Elvis fans. And they pulled me in. A lot of people from my generation, I think, they pulled in with this release. Well, this must have been the same week... They released this Elvis release I'm about to show you. Because I remember, so my mom comes out of the store with my sisters. My mom said, hey, Johnny, I got something for you. I said, I'm like, okay. So she hands me this CD that came out earlier in the week, probably on a Tuesday. And usually when new um, CD releases come out, they're always $9.99. Because I remember saying, yeah, it was only $9.99. I got this for you. This. This release... My mom bought me that day, the first week it came out, and she handed this to me. And I'm like, hmm. She probably didn't even know what type of release it was. She probably didn't even know it was the greatest hits or anything. But this is made me go off the beating path and start listening to Elvis a little bit. So my mom bought me this CD. And every time my mom, I remember she would buy a CD, she would put it in the CD player. 
and listen to, you know, a few seconds or maybe a minute of a track and skip. Like, that's what my mom always did every time she bought a new album. She would just go through the tracks quick. Hmm, that sounds good. Eh, I don't know about that one, whatever. So, I just, we decided to open it and put it in a CD player. And I was surprised at how many songs I even knew. So... Um, that was really cool. And my mom, my dad, they remembered some of those songs. They're like, oh, like, you ain't nothing but a hound dog. I mean, they're not that old, but that's just a, a lot of song that a lot of people know. Or, you know, Burning Love that was on here. Can't Help Falling in Love. You know, those big songs that Elvis did. So, my mom, it's like she knew she, I was getting into something. And she liked that I was getting into something. Or, she's, I'm, I'm sure she was glad I was into Elvis than the other music, you know like rap or certain pop artists or whatever. But she bought me this CD and it changed my musical life forever. This is when I discovered Elvis. And ever since then, really people, I've been an Elvis fan and not too long following after this is when I found out, because of Elvis, I found out about records and I started having, collecting albums, me and my dad. Um, I remember we used to go to antique stores and I just remember one day going to an antique store and I saw these big things. I think I probably saw like Michael Jackson's Thriller album because I knew about Michael already. And I'm like, what's that? And he's like, oh, that's a record. I'm like, what's a record? And then my dad's like, oh, well, the record is this thing that has music in it. You put a needle on it and sound comes out and it's the music of the album. And it intrigued me so much. And then before you knew it, I was collecting albums and looking for Elvis albums. So, I mean, I thought it was going to be longer than this, this video, but that's really a short and sweet on really how I became an Elvis fan. It was just as simple as coming home from school and turning on the TV and seeing this image of Elvis in a crappy movie. And then my parents feeding my passion, I guess you can say, or feeding an interest of mine by purchasing, purchasing this CD for me the first week it came out and this was a huge release like i said this is this is probably the last humongous release that elvis had i mean it was number one all over the country all over the world in the u.s the remix of a little less conversation was out this is the last time they really brought in a lot of fans and i was one of them um, especially a lot of people from my generation because i feel like in the 80s they tried to reintroduce elvis in the 80s and then in the early 2000s they tried to do it again and I think they were very successful. This is the last time they were very successful with it. So, but you know what, people? I don't want to ramble on. It's not repetitive. But I hope you enjoyed this little story about me, how I became an Elvis fan. Um, and that's really about it. That's the story, man. And I'm sticking to it. I didn't use all my visuals. But in case you guys are ever curious about how I became an Elvis fan, that's really it. And then it goes from there. You know, I went to Graceland. Um, I keep up with the releases now. I have a huge collection of Elvis of music and other stuff and like you know other memorabilia and all that stuff and I still collect them today I started when I was you know about 14 and I'm 31 now still in the Elvis and I and I went through a lot of other phases with artists you know I went through and after this it's like for me listening to Elvis it opened me up to a lot of other music that was out there especially old music like I went I remember going through a little Beatle phase a little, a huge Jimi Hendrix phase, a huge Led Zeppelin phase, but the guy who paved the way for all those guys that I just named was this guy right here, Elvis, one of the most influential rock and roll artists who, you know, influenced rock bands. So it was a good place to start. And I, always, I just want to make a quick recommendation: if you're trying to look into getting the Elvis in music, this Elvis Thirty Number One Hits release is still a very good place to start. So I do recommend it. But you know what, people? That's it. That's my story, and I'm sticking to it about how, how I discovered and became an Elvis fan and discovered him all on my own. So the next video I probably will do with Elvis was they did a double whammy of a Prince video. So this next video, I'll probably do another Elvis one, and it's actually a 50th anniversary of a certain album. Can you guys guess what it is? Well, I hope you all enjoyed this video. Leave a comment if you like. Maybe tell me how you became a fan of Elvis Presley and how you discovered him. Was it from your parents, on your own, grandparents? Let me know. Thank you all for watching this video, and I will see you all next time. So see you later, and goodbye.